Hello. Good evening. Welcome to Talkin' Taylor. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Lee Duvenek. We're going to be talking some Taylor tonight. Let me get my guest on, the wonderful Lisa Borez. Hi. Hi. Look at you serving nighttime looks. Da da. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Here I am in just the Taylor archive, which is, of course, where I want to be. But I mean, I like your view a little bit better. Well, you are the archive god, so that is great to be. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I'm going to get a crown soon, just like queen of the archives. Um, where are you joining us from? Where is your cute little place? I am on um, the Upper East Side. I was like, don't give out a full address, Lisa. No. Don't be bad. <laughs> How much am I? <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, be great. I'm so excited for you to join us tonight. Now, you're... Um, you're not new to the city. You grew up here, right? Right. <gasps> well, I'm from Staten Island. Oh. Um, nobody's ever been, but everybody's heard of it. So it's like <laughs> those kind of places. But um, so you can't like drive from here to there. You uh -huh. take a bridge or how I would always like get to school, or get to work was a boat. So you take the ferry. Which is really cool. I mean, coming from like my little like landlocked self in Texas, like taking a boat to school is kind of like so amazing. It is cool. It's cool if you like, um, like if you're coming into the city, if you go all the way to the front of the boat, you see like the Statue of Liberty and then you see like downtown hit you and you're like, I love my life. And then you're like, on the did side. you ever like reference like working girl? Like, did you see oh. like let the liver, let the river run as you were like oh. going to school? Girl, please, yes. <laughs> um, quite honestly, the only reason I think I've ever been to Staten Island is because Christina Lynch Markham lives in Staten Island. So it's always like the excursion when she hosts us at her house. It's an adventure. It is. It is. It's like you're like going out of town, but it's just like you're still in the same, like you're in the city. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you like you like grew up there, like through high school? So I grew up there until... I always, my parents still live there, but yeah. um, for high school, I went to LaGuardia, which is oh. uh, right on the other side of Lincoln Center. Yeah. Um, and so I commuted, which uh -huh. was hard, but I mean, so worth it. It's like such an incredible opportunity because it's, yeah. it's a public school. Like, I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that, but I auditioned like a, I auditioned like a grown up, but it was at <laughs> New York City public school. Yeah. Um, there. It, we would do like two double periods of dance. So you had like a double period of ballet and then a double period of brand. Oh it, my gosh. Oh yeah. In high school? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Yeah. Um, I remember that was like, because we, like the Taylor school used to host the summer intensive there. Right, 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 right. So like my formative years, like my first Taylor class with Susan McGuire was in the studios at LaGuardia. Yeah. The, and like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we there was like the four studios, and so we would just like rotate between. So there was always like a lot going on, but like there was always just some. Like Richard Chinsey was teaching in one room, and then Kathy McCann's yelling at people to rip the back in the other one, and Susan's <laughs> just like move the earth, and it's like it's a whole lot of Taylor going on. Since we had Graham, it felt pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Graham in high school, like that just seems because I didn't experience it until college. So yeah, it was intense. I bet. You're like 14, like doing like pleadings to the, like, you know, like finding new muscles all over the place. <laughs> exactly. But, You're both growing them and finding them at the yeah. same time. <laughs> um, but it was great. Yeah, we had um, a couple of Graham teachers, uh, this woman, Penny Frank, who's the most lovely woman, and mm -hmm. Deborah Zoll and mm. uh, Elise King. And um, yeah, it was just incredible. And I think like it, you know, when you're 14 and you don't want to follow rules, Graham is kind of hard to start with. Yeah. But it's really, like, shaped, like, how I, not just, like, how I dance, but, like, how, like, Taylor kind of clicked a little. You yeah. Know I mean? It's all the same. Yeah. I always say it's the hardest thing about joining Taylor is that, like, you have to, like, intrinsically know Graham, and then you kind of have to forget it because it's Paul's... It's like, it's Graham through Paul's body, right? Yeah. It's like him knowing all this information about how contraction works, and then he, like, did it his own thing. Exactly, yeah. Um, so 
when you went to college, was that helpful? Because like you had already had the modern training, like you didn't have to start as a freshman like other people did. Like I was a competition dancer. So like when I showed up and did Graham, oh. I tried to do it like a lyrical dancer and like- No shame, my friend. I had, I, had <laughs> I definitely had some fun, fun covers that we don't need to talk about ever again. Nobody's nice. yeah. Um But yeah, I, I did feel like when I went to college, I like, I had an understanding of how to move in just not a balletic way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the hard school like saved me like i was just not ready like i knew i loved dance but i was just like mm -hmm. for like the real deal you know mm. new york city like all those auditions and they the hard school is really intense with ballet uh, yeah work and oh. um and it made my feet so strong and i like complained the whole way through i was like oh, <laughs> point. i'm short i'm never doing that but it made me like such a strong dancer and it was like such a great um like community and um like just the department was really awesome at least who was running it at that point um by the time i graduated it was stephen peer oh uh, yeah juilliard yeah yeah and he like danced like in limon and um ballet companies in europe that i'm forgetting right now amber <laughs> um and yeah that man like saved my life i mean like really <laughs> like instilled like so much confidence in me that like I could do this yeah you know I mean it's it you need that over oh like, it's so I, important to have that right <laughs> yeah. yeah did you have any of the because like buggy you ran buggy who you, we dance with she yeah. also went there did you guys have yeah. some of the same <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, like she was like the biggest thing ever like it was right so and she actually came once when I, I think I was a senior and she came and she taught like a master class for two hours and it was just like, I just, I just remember like running after her. Like she was like Esplanade runs and just like trying to catch up. And I just thought it was amazing that like, not only that she was an alumni of where I was currently going to school, but also just that she was like my height yeah. and that she was so successful and was so strong and was like so captivating. Like even just teaching a class, I was like, we're not on stage, but like, that's just how she dances. That's how like all the Taylor dance, dance you know? Yeah incredible wow yeah i would imagine like there there like being a shorter dancer um i would imagine like it would be difficult like taylor company must be the company that like you see so many of women of your height like put in a position of power like you can identify with them in a certain sort of way right totally i feel like when i was in college like contemporary ballet was like really big mm-hmm if you weren't doing classical works, you were doing like, like, and I was just like, ah, there's just, I mean, what, what am I, like, you know, like. <laughs> I don't fit into this world. I'm not gonna have like a leg. Well, I mean, I yeah. can have a leg up to here, but it's not gonna be like six inches long or yeah. like seven, six feet. Oh, whack it, it's not gonna stick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, having like, you know, like buggy and like, I remember like Julie Tice and just like the, the tinies just being so powerful. And like, I remember eventually seeing them on stage, like then putting together that I saw them at the Taylor studio and like not realizing, I was like, oh my God, they're so short. Like not realizing they were because it, it, the movement is so big and powerful. Yeah, yeah, that was my experience too. Like I saw the company um, when I was going to school in Dallas and I like met them after like for a post show reception. And I was just like, <laughs> Why is everybody so short? Like, it was incredible. Because it's like, even like meeting Michelle Fleet, who is not like the shortest dancer, Michelle is like, you know, kind of a petite woman. So, but like, she, her movement is so big. And all of them, you know, they like outdance each other on stage. And of course, I'm here and they're up there. <laughs> but it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome. So you graduated in what year? Uh, 2011. 2011 and then so you came back to New York City back to hometown yes moved back home with mom and dad for like a year as we do um but... by that time had you seen the company like seen Taylor yet I mean mm -mm. you'd just taken the master class from Buggy that was it mm. but all throughout college I had done the Parsons intensives oh so I was like learning Taylor before I even knew I was learning Taylor in For those who might not know, David Parsons is a noted alumni that um, really got his like his whole like dancing career started here at, at under Paul's tutelage, and then he went on to found his own company. But like 
a lot of that kind of use of the back and the weight in this and the big dancing really comes from Paul. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you must know the story, but I, I was, me and Maria, and mm -hmm. we were apprenticing with Elisa Monte dance. Okay. Came from Graham too, so it's all, all small. It's all connected. And uh, one day Maria just looked at me and said, I like Taylor. Oh. Like, oh, because I know I had been looking for like warm up classes because rehearsal was at 1230. So you did have time to take the 10 o'clock class somewhere. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of Christine Wright, who I love, but I realized Goddess. I could take a class that wasn't ballet without mm -hmm. like improv the whole time. And then like, I'm not on my leg, you know, <laughs> right. real structured class. Right. And then I started going to Taylor. I show up. It's Lisa Viola's set class. I'm the only putz that has no idea that it's a set class. So I'm like, I'm looking around like, okay, everybody knows something but me. Like I could, and she kind of went and, and everyone just started. I was like, oh God, it's what I'm about. <laughs> but I was, I mean, I, after that, I went like every Tuesday. Yeah. Like, every Tuesday for her. And I would always take Anne Maria's class. Yeah. That's Which wild. I mean, if you're gonna go to two people's classes, talk about yin and yang. Like, <laughs> they are like the two sides of like the Taylor goddess in my mm -hmm. mind. Cause like, here's Anne Maria who's just like, throw your heart and you know, do all this stuff. And she's like choreographing, but in the Taylor style. And you can see that all the like the movement that you saw on stage was coming from her body. And it's like glorious passion. And then you get to Lisa's class and she's just like, Taylor knowledge incarnate. She's just like, here's the most structured class that will get you on your leg and I will teach you all of the rep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, you, you, I mean, like Lisa Viola just shouts out airs and then like everyone knows what to do and you're, you're like, what's air? Like, I have no idea what's happening. But then, like, <laughs> class, you're just like running like a banshee and she's like, I want to feel your spirit. And you're just like, okay. It's like, they're both like so perfect. Like if yeah. anyone gets a chance to take both of those, like, do it. It's <laughs> Ape Seed. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, that's amazing. So you, it was only last year that you got into the company. Mm hmm Yeah, last May. Yeah. I remember you in the, like, I think your first, like, official day at work, it seemed like, was set, like, you were there for the dress rehearsal for um, the Bach Festival last June. I remember you in the house, and you are just like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I guess I got the job and I'm here. Of the times I've watched the Taylor Company, that was the most stressful time because you're just saying they're like, I'm gonna do that one day soon. <laughs> you know, usually you sit back and that's hopeful, like, oh, I hope I can do that one day, and then you're like watching all you amazing dancers, and you're like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> that was really that was a stressful that was a stressful week. Oh. Um, it was stressful for me as well. Um, I have to say. Uh, what were the first pieces that you went into? Like, describe to me what it's like to be the new dancer in this company. Oh, the new dancer is a wild ride. It's amazing. It's I mean, you had your girls, because like Maria was there and Jada was there. So right. it was kind of like, I remember you guys had each other and I was happy you could bond. We had a buddy system. And we yeah. <laughs> um, but the first thing I did was Promethean Fire mm -hmm. as a pillow. And that was crazy because it's so tense. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's so powerful and it's like one of the best dances, you know, like it's a dancer's dance. It's like a pedestrian eye dance, like loves it. But like going, the put in, like, you know, practicing, you know, in rehearsal and feeling like, okay. Mm -hmm. And the first show we did, you know, like for anyone that doesn't know it, like starts with the curtain down and the music starts and it's like Bach and thing, and then like slowly the curtain comes up and the dance is like, like really intense. And like, I can always feel like the sweat dripping down oh, my sides. Already, you haven't even moved. And the curtain goes up, and I just felt all the dancers around me like their their energy just like changed, and I you're just like, oh, what? So it's about to go down. Like you just felt everyone in the on stage with you, you hadn't been doing anything. And it was so intense. It was, it, I just felt like I was put in a wash machine and just, <laughs> yeah, at the end. I don't, like, I don't remember dancing. 
<laughs> yeah, you crawl off at the end of the first section from that pile, and you're just like, did I survive it? Did it really all happen to me? Did it happen? It did. You saw me, right? Like, it, yeah. Um, but that's like, I feel like that's the best way to do it. You know, like for your first one, is just like to be terrified, but to be so grateful. You know, like the whole thing was yeah. such an experience. I remember being on stage being like, you are never going to feel this again. Like, you got to like, I know you're about to poop your pants, your, your guitar, but like, you need to really like, hold on to this moment because it was it was so incredible it was so that's cool. amazing yeah and it was my first time at the pillow too which is like um, it's like going to dance camp oh it's like bucket list bucket list bu like yeah it was, it was that was that's nuts yeah okay well i have a visual aid for this next thing and this is another one of the first pieces i remember you in um so name that dance <laughs> but ah dust <laughs> oh dust um these are the amazing costume sketches, uh, the original costume sketches by Gene Moore from 77. And I mean, you can see the detail work for the like, we call them scabs that you like have to scratch during the piece, but, and there's like, like, you know, the whole cast, each one has like a very individualized, stylized, uh, different unitard. I mean, they're all gorgeous. Oh my gosh. How was that going into Dust? Like, because there's Promethean where it's like, it's a group piece, it's about the ensemble. And then there's Dust, where I feel like everybody's experience in it is a little bit different. Like, everybody has their own challenges that like Paul threw at them originally. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, Dust was, Dust is hard. Yeah. Like, actually, like, it's like, um, hard on the body, but then also like, and then you're balancing on one leg for a little while. Like, it's a, it's actually, like, it, it's difficult in many different levels. Yeah. Um, and I remember, get, I remember getting casting. I w we had, like, time off, and we were on vacation. And I was on vacation, and I was in a hotel room, and the casting came out. And I just clicked the dust and started watching it and realized I was who I was. Then realizing there was, like, 16 counts, I was on stage by myself. And I was just, I was like, <laughs> Happening. Like, it's so, like, but um, I love dust even though it's so hard but I think that's part of the reason why I love it so much is that like you can't just like putz through it you know like you have right. to go through it you have to get in it and do it and it's it's intense the music's kind of intense it's kind of wacky at the time yeah um, the counts are very specific um, <laughs> Uh, there's parts, I just remember, like, there's parts that you're, like, my character would have to, like, crawl off stage, and Betty was very adamant that I did not use my legs. So right, just, all like, arms. Arms, and then I had, like, and then I would run around stage and come back on. Like, it was, it, that was crazy, but I, I loved it. Yeah. I remember, um, uh, when, when I got put into it, it's, so, like, my first rehearsal with it. Yeah. We were, Building, I think they had like the summer intensive right at the studio, and um, so there's a there's a part where a lot of crazy stuff had like just gone down, and then we're all like in a piley thing, and we're yeah. like, popping around and like turning on just turning around yourself, and you stop really fast, and then you yeah, like, grandetes off or whatever, and I'm in the back. And when you're sometimes when you're new and you're in the back, you're like so happy that you're, in the back. <laughs> you're like cool. Yeah. Um, and I was directly behind Sean Mahoney, who's like a giant. My, yeah, he's a giant. And um, we like stop and then I hear Betty go, "Nisa, you're tiny, but I can see you. You're going the wrong way." I had no clue that I. So much going on, like I didn't know that I was going the wrong way like, the whole time. <laughs> and Betty sees everything, even even through other bodies. She yeah. Was, so every time I do dust at that moment, I always left. Like, left. <laughs> <laughs> they can see you. I mean, to be fair, the put in, you're always like, they're always just looking at you. It's like <laughs> anybody else could be doing whatever, and it's just like all eyes are on you. You feel it. Yeah. That's a good but I think what I loved about seeing you in Dust is like, even from the audition, even from classes before that, I knew you were like the go for broke girl. You're like, I'm going to whack myself to oblivion. 
and and it's beautiful but like to see you do that like lila solo where you're like stamping and turning and throwing oh. your arms and i was just like oh my gosh she's 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 getting it it was like it was amazing i was like this is incredible it like it's it happens so fast but there's so much in there but it's so like fun because it's like you just have to do that stuff and it, it's like slow down and think about it you're gonna mess it up so you just like have to do it as big and powerful as humanly possible totally and then you get off and you like look around and you're like did it happen <laughs> like, <laughs> like, did i break my neck like what just happened <laughs> we're still here we're still here um i think we're at question and answer time if anybody has any questions for lisa or me or both of us hopefully for lisa please write off in the comments. We wanna hear. Um, you can use the question and answer button at the bottom, it's in the middle right next to comments. Um, I'm gonna start off and ask um, Lisa, what is your favorite 90s um, oldie that you like to jam out to? Cause I've seen you in the, in the car rocking out to it. Oh, wow, that's so hard. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Sometimes the cranberries, some. Yeah. Like if you if you need to like let it out a little, you know. Sometimes like you're like, just in your room, just like letting yeah. it go. But like voice to men, if you need to like be calming. Oh um, yeah. Like the '90s is just a beautiful range, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All the feelings were being had in the '90s. Um, I don't know. Like Britney is good, but like not all the time. But like a sensible Britney, like when you like sensible Britney. Yeah, you know, like it's like a certain state of mind. Yeah. You know? Um, what would you warm up to? Like, what is, what's your playlist for when you're warming up? Or do you not do music before a show? I, it changes. So sometimes, um, like I can listen to like more like seventies or like, sometimes I can listen to like Pink Floyd or like something that just is like, oh. very, like you can move on the beat or like not on the, you know, you just kind of right. like but it's like music that like I grew up with and like my dad listens to that. So like it just mm -hmm. like very like calming. Um, and sometimes if I felt like I needed to like pump myself up a little, I spent, before I got hired at Taylor, I spent three years teaching fitness and I just have all these like very high energy. <laughs> Which is painful, we don't need it all the time. But <laughs> you probably don't need to blow it out at like at the top of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I have a, I have an arrangement of music that I would that I'd listen to. I don't really listen to like the songs that I'm gonna dance to, like any of the scores or anything. Right. Or music that I that I just have to like it. Yeah. Like, feel something. I feel yeah. yeah. Um, Petra uh, signed in, and she wants to know um, what have what has been your favorite moment so far of being a part of the Paul Taylor Dance Company. Um. Honestly, it was when my, my parents came to Lincoln Center. Mm. That was, I'm an only child. Like, the only reason why I even danced because my mom was, like, nervous. I was going to have, like, good social skills. So she, like, threw me to dance. I just up. Um, so I think, like, like, I remember, like, when I got hired, mm -hmm. I called my parents. And I was, like, the thing that flew out of my mouth was, like, we did it. Like, we got it. You know what I mean? Because, like. Yeah. Uh, I'm only able to do this because they like helped me. Yeah. Like, class like made it okay to go to, you know, this New York City like a year after 9-11. Like it, you know, it was like very like, they knew I needed to like do this dream. So mm -hmm. supported me for so long. Um, so I, I mean, they came to my first show at Jacob's Pillow. Mm -hmm. the, I remember like, meeting them there. They were lovely. Yeah. Thanks. Um, my parents are from New York, so right. like, Lincoln Center just means so much more to them. Um, it's like iconic as like your hometown house. Exactly. Yeah, in like the most epic way, you know. Right. It's, right. The center. I mean. Yeah. Um, so I remember like after the show, like doing the show, and then like, um, just walking down like the like promenade steps and like seeing them in their eyes, just being like, "Holy crap." <laughs> just did that of <laughs> my eyes were like doing the same thing you know what was the program would you perform for the, like their first show seeing you do you remember first thing they saw was 
shoot, what was it? Post Meridian or like Esplanade or something? Like, was it like? It was actually dust. And then, yeah. and then they came to the one that was like Post Meridian, Syzygy, like all that. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. It was, I love it was that. like, because we like, you know, we're like a team. So like, right. we just did that. <laughs> Boris, Team Boris is killing it. Like, look at us. Um, okay, we have one, another question. Austin Kelly asks, how would you recommend a dancer get to your position of joining the company, especially during a pandemic? Woof, I know. <laughs> I mean, during a pandemic, it's uh, kind of like no rules, like craziness, um, you know, but I think actually I take that back. Right now, it's all about class. It's always been about class, even in person, even on Zoom, you know, like, thank God we're back on Zoom. Like, we loved it when we could do classes for you on Instagram earlier this year, but like, now being on Zoom and having the ability to like, see everybody and like, have the connection again of at least being able to like, dance together, like, that has brought such warmth to my heart. So for me, at least, I'm like, come to class, get to know us, come for Elisa Tuesday, she's doing it on Zoom now, like, it's the way to like become a part of the family, I think. I think it's funny. I took, I was in class today and Christina said this and mm -hmm. I think she said this, or maybe it was Novak later on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but I have felt this way for the last couple of years, not my whole career of like moving to New York and dancing, but um, anytime when you make the switch of realizing that taking class is such a gift and that the second class starts you should be performing mm. it will change the way that you dance it will also change the way you audition because i definitely remember like my first two auditions that i did get i wasn't even thinking about performing i was just thinking about like getting the steps and it's like sometimes it's just not about that totally like, if, if performing is the goal and you want to audition for a performing company you need to show how you perform totally you know? So um, even like the first plie or like whatever happens, it's like lift your chest, open your eyes, like imagine you're on stage. Um, and I am totally guilty of like not doing that during the quarantine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my living room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like once I like, once it like hit me that like you need to like show up to class and like, practice performing so that when the audition comes you're not terrified that it will be mm -hmm. like muscle memory that you know how to like project and open your eyes and like is this a character like be a character is this serious be right. serious. you know um right but it's pretty cool that you can practice it at home and nobody can see you <laughs> it's not like you actually have to do it. camera off <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly like, tilt it away um but yeah you can like even though if you're in like the tiniest room, you can really practice performing. And sometimes right. it is your face, like a regular audience member sometimes doesn't look at your feet or your legs, right. looking at your face. Right. The new challenge I want for people in Zoom classes is to put the camera just from hip up and we're just gonna be looking at the face and the back and the torso, which some people don't have that option. They just literally have to do that every time because like yeah. there's no space. <laughs> I love teaching class now because it's just a whole bunch of bodies and like I never like everybody's on the same like a different count and you know it's all going on but everybody it's everybody's living their best life in their own bubble and but we're all connected. Um, I want to mention a couple things coming up uh, virtually for the Paul Taylor Dance Company. This Sunday we're having a community day. Um, it's going to be on YouTube Live, I believe, at 6 p.m. We're going to be highlighting A Field of Grass and Offenbach Overtures, two amazing pieces from the 90s, complete with um, alumni who will be um, kind of doing a commentary, which will be amazing. Um, and then the big one that we think hope that you all will join us for is on November 19th. We're hosting a virtual benefit. It is free for anybody to come to. Um, please register with the link in the company's Instagram bio. Um, we want to have as many people there to see us. We're doing some cool things outside and inside. We're back to rehearsals, masked and safe, but we are dancing. So we hope to um, show you, you know, what we're doing now because we're still dancing and we hope you will join us. Um, I want to thank Lisa for being our guest today. She Hi. was amazing. It was so wonderful to get to talk to you. Um, I hope everybody is well and they have a wonderful weekend.
Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Bye. Bye.